everybody, it's Wendy, and today is April 15th, so it is time for our monthly jewelry challenge, um, and this month we have got, our month is April, our um, color is pastels, our metal type is silver or copper, and um, the thing we're making is either earrings or a keychain. And our theme or fun element is Easter bunnies, chicks, or crosses. So today what we are going to do is we are going to make a planner, purse, dangle, keychain, um, whatever you want to use it for really, backpack, dangle, whatever. So what I have got here is I have one of these crosses. Now this cross came from the Dollar Tree and they have these wooden cutouts of crosses and hearts and bugs and uh, metal steampunk, or not metal, but steampunk elements, um, just all kinds of stuff. And so this came in a package with several different crosses. We're going to use it. I've got four Swarovski crystals in a 20SS and um, one in a 29 Chaton. So the 29 is going to go here in the middle. I'm just going to embellish this cross with a little bit of bling because the AB coating picks up the purple so well, okay? And the purples and the blues and everything. So AB, if you don't know, means Aurora Borealis. It is a coating that Swarovski developed, and um, that's what is on these crystals. So we're going to use those. I have uh, a mixture of beads here. I do have a large lobster clasp. Now these are available on my website if you're interested. I have a little length here of some large link chain okay I have a little piece of 20 gauge wire here and this is like I don't know not quite six inches long um, so we're gonna use that and then I have an assortment of beads I've got some Swarovski AB coated um, this is like a I think it's called like a hex I don't know what it's called some kind of bead <laughs> um, I've got some bicones right here I've got some bicones in light sapphire AB. Um, here's another AB bicone. Here's another AB. I thought I had some purple ones, but maybe I didn't put them in here. I may not have. And then I've just got an assortment of beads. So all kinds of beads here in purples, uh, blues, and white. So I'm just sticking with the three colors here, purple, blue, white, and silver and clear. I mean, I guess you don't really consider that a color, <laughs> but um, that's what I'm sticking with for my dangles on my keychain here. So um, we won't use all these beads, but I like to have, you know, an assortment laid out here so I can pick what I want from it. Um, okay, and I do have some more white pearls up here in case I decide to add them in. I do have my key ring here. I have some silver spacers, tiny ones. Um, some even tinier ones, and these are fire polish, um, these are the Czech fire polish faceted spacers that they had on sale at Hobby Lobby for a while, and I bought a bunch of these silver ones, so I may use those too. And then I've got jump rings, eye pins, and head pins here, okay? So, get everything together um, that you want to use for your keychain. And come on back. Oh, and I do have some E6000 glue. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. Come on back and um, we'll make a keychain. Alrighty, so the first thing we've got to do, I'm going to do, is glue my, um, my little crystals on because that will give them time to dry. So I've got my E6000 here. This is how I work with my E6000. Um, I don't know, most of you guys know that I... My job has been to um, work for a company that uses only Swarovski crystals, and we glue um, crystals onto jewelry components to make earrings. And so all we use is E6000. Swarovski recommends E6000 for their crystals, so that's what I'm using. Okay, And I have a toothpick here that I'm going to put my glue on with. I have a toothpick here that has a little bit of beeswax on the end. This beeswax comes from Hobby Lobby in a big block like this. It is actually over with the leather working stuff. So if you want to pick some of that up, it's great for picking the crystals up. All right, so my E6000 is kind of dried out on the end here. So let me get that off. Put it in the trash. 
and we'll just get a little bit on the toothpick. Now, it doesn't take much at all. We just need a tiny little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and put the middle crystal in, and I'm just around the edges because this is a hole, but it's a chaton, so it's going to poke down in there. So around the edges of where it's going to go and across the, the middle there, I'm just going to go ahead. And this crystal actually <laughs> has some glue dried on it. I've pulled it off of something else, so let me get that off of there just so it'll sit flat. You can get the glue off the crystals if you um, use them and then you take apart whatever you did. It will come back off. So, okay. And just set that right down in there. Just like that. And now we're going to put our 20s on. So again, I'm just going to get a little tiny bit of glue here. And all my 20s I'm going to put on these little points right here. These convergence little spots where the these little cutouts kind of come together on the points. So put one here. So my glue is, this glue is kind of old. <laughs> I have a couple new tubes, but I hate to open them until I use this one up. But it's kind of, it's getting, it's kind of old. I've had it for a really long time. Okay, there we go. Always put the lid back on because otherwise it's going to blow out onto your workspace. <laughs> um, and then these I'm just going to set right down in the glue that I just put on. Okay. And that is just going to bling our cross out a little bit, make it kind of pretty and shiny. You could do the other side too if you wanted to, because it is, you know, double-sided, but I'm just going to do the one side. There we go. So we're just going to set him aside and we'll let that dry. Okay, now what we got to do is we got to make some dangles. So I'm going to start out with one of each of my large focals. Okay, so I've got these that are large focals. Um, I may take this one out. And I may take this one out. Okay, so I'm going to use these. I'm definitely going to create dangles out of them. I like there to be three or four large focals on here. I just think it makes it really pretty um, when you have some focals, some larger focals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little fire polish spacers and I'm going to, if these will go on this head pin, oh they will. Well, not all the way to the bottom they won't. Okay, so what I am going to do is take a pearl, Let's see if the pearl will go all the way. Well, you know, no, yeah, I'm not going to use the, the, uh, there we go. The pearl goes. So I'm going to put the pearl on, then a spacer, then this big bead. Mm, no, just the pearl and the big bead. It doesn't need the spacer because I'll make it too. Yeah, so we'll just do the pearl and the big bead. And I'm just going to make a dangle. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. I'm going to show you the old-fashioned way first. I like to use the old-fashioned way, but when I'm doing this many, I use my one-step looper. But I'll show you the old-fashioned way first. So you take this, you bend it at a 90-degree angle with your chain nose pliers. See, just like that. Then we're going to cut it off here. And I don't like to have huge big loops. <laughs> um, I like my loops kind of small, so that's about how much room I leave. And then I'm going to take my round nose pliers, and I'm going to roll this back. Just like this. Now, you want to make sure this is closed up really, really good, okay? Because this is going to be hanging on your, your keychain. And one other thing that I will throw out there, if you want, you can coil these. If you want to make this um, very, very sturdy, you can coil it and just attach it with a jump ring. I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to attach them like they are, like this. But you can do that, okay? So one more thing I think I'm going to go ahead and do first so I can kind of put this together because I like to pick my chain up and be able to see how things are hanging. I'm going to create the, um, the little element that I use between the keychain here and the, um, the chain, the regular chain. So first of all, I'm going to put my lobster on and I bet that, yep, that just totally messed my nail up. <laughs> oh, well. 
Okay, so there's my lobster. So this can now be a, it can attach to a planner. It can attach to a purse. It can attach to a backpack or, you know, it can just be a key ring with your keys, whatever, however you want to do it. But it's really nice if you want to put your keys on here, then you can clip this onto your purse or you can clip it onto your belt buckle, whatever, or your uh, loops on your belt, whatever. Okay, so we've got that. Now we're going to create um, this piece here in the middle that we're going to put our chain onto. It's going to hook our chain and this together, okay? So the first thing we're going to do, do I want bead caps for this? Uh, I can't decide if I want bead caps for this or not. Well, these, these won't go on there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let me grab a couple bead caps. Okay, so I grabbed a few bead caps. I may use them on some of the other things that we that we do too. So, okay, first thing we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and make the loop on the bottom. So to do this, I'm going to make a wrap loop. So I'm just going to take this right here. Uh, let me come down about this far. I'm going to bend this at a 90 degree angle like that. I'm going to take my round nose pliers and I'm going about the middle of them here. I want to get as close to the bend as I can and I'm going to come up and over. So here's what I've got. Then I'm going to rotate my plier here and I'm going to go ahead and take this around just like that. Okay. Now I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and I'm going to hold this and I'm going to take my other chain nose plier and I am going to wrap it. And I'm just going to try to do about two or three neat wraps. Now, I am not a wire worker, <laughs> let me tell you. I do not do well with wire. It, we don't get along, but um, I think I can manage this. Okay, so just a couple of neat wraps, just so it's secure and is not going to come undone. I'm gonna cut that off, I know it flew. And I am going to make sure that there is no sharp piece right here. So I'm just going to tuck this in as best I can. And that's pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to put my bead on. So I'm going to do a bead cap, my big bead here, and another bead cap, just like this. Okay, and we're going to do the same exact thing. You're going to turn it at a 90 degree angle. Now I go a little bit up over the bead because I want a couple of room, a little room for a couple wraps. So I do leave a little bit more space when I do these. Okay, we're going up. Take the pliers and go all the way around. So there's what we've got. And like I said, my loops don't turn out perfect. I am definitely not um, a wire working person, but this will be okay. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Okay, we're going to cut this off. So let's pull this, take that up a little so I can get in there. Try to hold it this time so it doesn't fly. Okay, and then I'm just going to tuck this piece in because it is definitely poked out there a little bit and you may have to hold this with your plier or your finger and try to tuck it because they like to bit to uh, spin okay there you go so now we can take this if we want to make these both facing the same direction you can take your pliers and put them in there and try to round these out a little bit better if you want to yours probably turned out better than mine <laughs> but anyway so here's what we've got so now we're going to attach our chain to one end and our keychain to the other end. So for the keychain end, I'm just going to stick it right on. I'm not going to um, do any jump rings or anything like that because I want it to be secure. And this is fairly secure. It's going to hang in the one spot. The loop isn't so big that it's going to spin all over. So I, I like that. I don't want it to. I want it to kind of hang right there. Okay. And now we need to put our chain on this other end. Is this chain? Yeah, it's open links or jump ring or uh, cut links. I can open it. It's basically what I'm trying to say. All right, so we're just going to open this up. 
and this is thick chain. We're going to stick our dangle piece right on it, close it up. Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to look at it. So here's what I've got. It's fairly long, and when I put the cross on the end, it's going to be really long. So I'm going to cut or take a few of my links off. I don't need nearly this many. I'm going to take three off, okay? Which is going to make my dangle really nice and full when I'm finished. And I'll just take those off and use them for something else. Now this I am going to have to hook on with a ring or a bail. If I had a bail, a pinch bail, I could use that. But I don't have a pinch bail that will work for this, I don't think. So it's going to have to be a ring. I didn't think this through. Or, let's see, I could do a glue on bail, I suppose. Hmm. I wonder if I can just, let me see if I have any, if I have a big jump ring, fairly large jump ring. Yeah, I didn't look at the top of that cross very well to figure out if it would even hook on here. I mean, it will, I can make it, but let me see if I can go through here with this jump ring. Yeah, that'll work. I may try to find a smaller, thicker one just because it doesn't need to be quite that big. I have all my jump rings just mixed in here together. <laughs> Let's try this guy. So, let's just see if I can get this one. Oh yeah, this will work. Okay, so I'm gonna put it through and I'm just gonna hook it right onto my piece here and close it up. There we go, that'll be fine. All right, and I know it's hanging to one side, <clears throat> excuse me, but um, when you get all your dangles and stuff in here, it's that's not going to be noticeable at all. Okay. All right, so here's what we've got. So now what we have to do is we have to create a bunch of dangles. So here's the one. We're going to hook this one on somewhere. We'll put a purple one on, a blue one on, the silver one, and this pretty white one. Is that one even going to fit? I may take this one off and do the white one. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Since we have that other one at the top, that'll look better. All right, so we're going to make some dangles. So I am going to use my one-step looper because we're making so many. Um, so all we do is you just design it how you want it. Like, um, you know, say I want, I would like to do a sparkly bicone on the bottom of this blue bead, just like this. And you just make these however you want them to be. It's totally your creative control. And here's how the looper works. That's it. It's literally that easy. I, I don't like it as well as I like making my own because it leaves wire and these kind of dangle around a little. But for this project, it's not going to really matter. <clears throat> so I am just going to go ahead and use it because it will make this so much simpler and quicker. So let's put this guy on. Oh, it's holes blocked. Huh, that's odd. Well, if you get a bead that's hole is blocked, you need your beading all. Hold on, let me grab mine. Okay, so there we go. It came out. I don't know what it was, but it came out. Okay, now I'm probably going to need something on the end of this to keep this... Well, I don't know. We'll see. Well, yeah, it looks like it'll go. I was afraid that head pin would go through, but it didn't. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a loop. Okay, there's that one. And I'll worry about attaching the, you know, closing them all up and everything at the end. I hope these loops are going to be okay. I may have to attach these with jump rings, which I can do. If I need to. All right, let's put one of these, see if the spacer will go on here. Yeah, the spacers won't go all the way down to the bottom on these. These jump rings are too, or these um, head pins are too thick. I need a thinner head pin. I don't have a thinner one, so okay. So we won't use those on that. Let's see, let's use this little, this little ball here. Put it on here, and now I bet the spacer will go on the top. I just like these spacers because they're kind of shiny, sparkly. All right, let's go ahead and make our loop. And there we have it. And this last one, 
which I think it is really a cool bead. Um, and it holds too. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and make the loop with it. Okay, just like that. So here's what we've got so far. Now, if you want to go ahead and hook these on, you can. I'm not going to just yet. I'm going to pick out a bunch of my smaller beads here. I definitely want that one to go on there. I like these blue cracked glass. They're really pretty. And these purples. Do a couple purple pearls, another blue pearl. And I'm just trying to get together a big fairly large group of beads. I'm going to fill all this in um, with these little beads. It's going to be very full and pretty. And I think, let me put these pearls on too, they're kind of cool. Okay. Oh, but I've got the, I want these sparkly bicones on here because I really do want the sparkle. Okay, there we go. So I might leave it at that. We'll put them on and see how, how they end up looking. Okay. Um, so I'm going to make a bunch of loops out of these beads, and you go ahead and make a bunch of loops and come on back. Okay, so we're back, and I have got a ton of little dangles here, and I have decided that I'm going to go ahead and hang these on with jump rings, um, mainly because I just don't feel like the looper gets the, um, the loops solid enough, I, I guess I would say it that way. Um, I just don't trust it. So I am going to hang them on with jump rings. So I'm just kind of picking out some of my thicker, um, like six millimeter and some little four millimeters that are kind of thicker out of my jump ring container here. And I kind of hate to do that. I really don't like to hang them on with jump rings. I would rather hook them directly on, but um, I do not want it falling apart. <laughs> so um, jump rings are going to be the best way to go because of this looper. The looper just... It's okay. It's an okay tool. It makes your loops really fast and, you know, is a lot easier than doing them manually, but is not nearly as reliable as the loops you make manually, especially if you do wrap loops. I mean, the wrap loops, you know, are not going to come undone, or at least it would be really, really hard for them to, I would think. So anyway, um, I was just picking out a few jump rings here, and I'm going to go ahead and hook these on with a jump ring on each one. It actually may make them dangle better anyway, so it'll probably be okay. But I'm looking for my thicker ones. All right, so there we go. We've got several. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to hook my bigger beads on first. And the reason that I do that is because then I can fill in with the smaller beads and it just makes things a little more evened out. Okay, so... As you can see with the looper, that's the kind of a loop that you're going to get. Um, I'm just, I don't know. I may even redo this one because I don't like the way it, it looks at all. I just, I don't know. Everybody is big on the, but I'm just not so impressed with that thing. Um, which this is a big bead anyway, but yeah, it's not my favorite. It makes them fast, but it doesn't really make them good. And fast is not... A substitute for quality in my opinion so there we go that is a much better loop yep much much better okay so I'm gonna go ahead and hook this on with a jump ring making sure it's closed up really good take my jump ring if you're new to beading let me teach you something here when you open a jump ring you always hold it in your pliers like this and you open it side to side so if you can see in the middle of this jump ring it's got a obviously a cut you don't want to pull it open this way i'm just sacrificing this jump ring for the <laughs> purposes of this tutorial you don't want to pull it open that way because then number one you're not going to get it back into a very perfect round shape look at that it's like bent there and it's not going to close up good so do not do that when you um, open and close your jump rings you always want to grab it on either side of the, the cut and go front to back this way. Twist it this way. And that way you can twist it back closed and get it. It doesn't lose its shape. And, you know, it's just way, way better. All right. So let's put this guy on. And I'm just going to put him on this middle ring. 
And see when you close your jump ring back up, you can just close it right up. You want to make sure that the two pieces are touching and you can usually feel when they are. I go back and forth a couple times to make sure that I've got it really good and closed. Now, if you wanted to be super, super uh, secure with this, you could double jump ring these, but I'm not going to do that, but you could. So here's another one step looper loop. <laughs> I'm just going to close this one up the best that I can. Yeah, there we go. And attach it with a jump ring. All right, so this one, I think I might hang from this top loop that the actual big bead is on. Close it up really good. You just, you want to make sure that they're, in, see, you could even hear that one click when I closed it. You want to make sure they're closed really good because if they're not, they're, you know, this is going to be hanging. It's going to be in your purse. It's going to be hitting things and they'll come off if you don't have them closed up really good. Okay. Um, this one, I'm going to put on here, probably right in the middle. Yeah, right about here. And if you notice, I'm hanging some from one side of the um, these links and some from the other side. Okay, so the white one is hanging that way. This one's going to be this way just because, and I mean, I know when you pick it up, they're not going to hang to the sides, but this one cannot cross over to this side and this one cannot cross over to this side because of these links. Um, I guess it could, if no, it really couldn't because it couldn't fit through there. And that way it makes your project more even if you attach things to both sides, okay? So here's my next one, this really pretty purple. It's closed up pretty good there. I'll make sure here in a second. And this one, I think I might attach from this side of this top one. I'm trying to kind of even them out in color and make sure that there's no, like, you know, big gaps. So I'm going to put one here now. That'll be this one. And I don't like this loop at all because look how much room there is between. I mean, that whole thing just rattles around on there. I'm going to redo it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not impressed with the looper so much. I just like my loops to be smaller than that and not have all that wire in between. So if you don't care, then you're fine with the looper, but I do. I do care about that thing. That may not be an issue for anybody else, but it is for me. Okay. That's a lot better. It's way closer. A whole lot better. Okay, so let's find a jump ring for it. Oops, that jump ring just jumped right off the table. Okay. And this guy, I'm just going to put down here on the bottom, probably on this other side, because I've got a purple one on the one side. Not that it's going to matter, because we're going to fill in with so much stuff that the colors will, you know, it won't matter that there's one purple here and one purple there, but that's okay. All right, so here's what we've got so far. Now, I've made all these, and I don't know that I'll use all these, but we're going to fill in with a bunch of them. So I definitely want to get the Swarovski bead on there. I think it's really pretty, and it's going to blend all this AB stuff really well. So let's go ahead and put him right up here at the top, off of the bottom of the, whoops, off the bottom of our main focal bead. Okay. And then I try to kind of lay it out, you know, again, and look at it. Um, I like these sparkly little guys. Let's make sure they get on there. And let's see. We do need some color up here at the top, don't we? I might attach him to, I don't know. I'll put him right here. Okay. 
Now, I want to put this blue one on because I don't feel like I have a whole lot of blue. And I want to get a little more blue in there. So let's put this guy on. And we'll put him right here as well. And you can definitely put three or four on each link. Um, you want to, in fact, because you want them to, be, to fill in and be really full. Okay, so now let's do this other purple one because I want to make sure it gets on there. It's really pretty and sparkly. And let me close that loop up. Where can you go? Let's put you right here. We'll spread out the sparkle a little. We've got a lot at the top, so let's add some here at the bottom. Okay. Just pick it up if you need to and look at it. It's looking pretty, but it definitely needs more beads in there. Okay. And let's do this blue one. And you can use some bigger jump rings and some smaller jump rings. It'll just make them hang at different levels, which I like. You can even hook. Like I could take this bead and hook it onto this bead if I wanted to. Can even do it that way. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna hang this one all the way down off this, just so that it fills in the bottom pretty well. Yeah. All right. Now we're gonna fill in some more up here. We definitely need some things in the middle here. So I've got this one. Let's see. Let me do. Let me do this one. This one's really pretty. And I'm just. I'm not fast forwarding this or pausing this, so you can kind of see my process of how I think when I'm doing these things. Um, I just kind of, you know, try to fill in and make sure that everything looks full. Stagger the colors around a little bit, so you know. We've got a lot of blue. Let's do this purple. I'm going to put it right here. Just trying to fill in some spaces. Just like that. And then I'm not going to pick it up again. I'm just going to leave it laying on the table and just fill in what I can tell needs filled in from it laying right here on the table. Okay, so I like this. Let's get this on here. And see, that loop was open so much that the edge of the bead was going up into it. Let's close that up. <laughs> All right, and we're going to put it... Uh, I think we need some more stuff on this guy, this middle. Well, maybe not. Let's put it... Yeah, actually, we do. Actually, I better move up here a little bit. This is how I think. <laughs> Constantly change my mind. Well, let's do this. No, actually, let's do this. <laughs> so, I talk to myself all the time, too. Like, at work the other day, my boss was like, what? And I'm like, oh, I'm just talking to myself. I mean, I constantly talk to myself. I don't even know I'm doing it. It's terrible. But I do. Okay, let's close this up. Um, I'm going to put this one near the top up here. I might even... Uh, I was thinking about hanging him off of this bead. I think I'm going to. I'm going to hang him right off of that one. You can do that, and all it will do is make it full. You know, it's just going to, all these are just filling in, covering up this chain, and making it look really full. And especially if you're using different size jump rings, which I kind of am. I'm trying to mix them a little bit smaller and bigger. It just makes them hang at different levels, and if you've mixed your beads, actually, I'm going to turn this over. If you've mixed your beads and you've done like, um, you know, two or three things on each dangle, that also will vary the level that they hang at because you're going to have some longer than others. So that's a good thing to do too. Okay, now I'm just kind of looking at the back of it. And I like these to be really, really full. I don't like there to be gaps and, you know, so we're just going to fill it in all the way. This is a pretty little AB piece. I'm going to put it right in the middle, right here. Okay. It's looking good, and I've got a couple more things. 
I'm going to go ahead and put this pearl on. I like these pearls, these little drops. I think they're really cute. I'm going to put this one on. Maybe right here on this. There we go. It doesn't seem to have a whole lot going on right there, so we'll stick that one on there. The other one I'll put on the front. Flip it. Whoop. I think this is really turning out. I like these colors. It's turning out really pretty. This one I'll put down closer to the bottom since the other one's kind of in the middle. I tried to use all the pastels. Like I pulled out pink and yellow and green and but for some reason they just didn't it didn't look right to me. So when I pulled out everything but the purples and blues and probably because of the AB stones. I mean, we mix AB with everything at work. We put pinks, we put I mean it goes with yellows, but with this project it just didn't seem to be I don't know. When I pulled it out, pulled out the pinks and the yellows and the greens and just left the purples and blues, it looked so much prettier. So that's why I did that. I kind of wanted it to have all the pastel colors on it, but it just didn't work out that way. All right, I've got one more dangle. Let me pick it up and look at it. Okay, so hopefully flip it around here. Yeah, it's really, really full in the front, which I like. And I think I'm going to add one more back here. Like right around here. It looks like it needs it. So let me get a smaller jump ring for that one. And we'll just go ahead and, whoops, I need to close that, don't I? It's going to fall right off there if I don't. Okay. Whoops. Go ahead and put it right kind of in the middle right here. Right about here is a good spot. Okay. So now what you want to do is you want to pick it up and just look at it and see if there are any major spots that look like, you know, that they need filled in. And I really could do a couple more on the back, I think. So let me just make a couple more dangles here. Um, I'll use this big bead right here and just do a couple more on the back. It, it does need something. I'll have to put a little pearl on here because this one's got a big hole in it. I guess that pearl will go up in that hole. No, <laughs> it was a pretty big hole. So I'll do a pearl and then this little spacer. Okay. So I'm just going to put a couple more on the back just to kind of fill in and make sure. Oh, that spacer cracked. Wow. Okay. That's not good. Let's do a ball spacer. That'll, that'll not crack. It may go down in there, but no, nah, it's okay. Um, yeah, that spacer just cracked right in half. All right. I'm just going to make these loops myself. <laughs> I like my own loops way better. Get it down in there, little bead. It's wanting to come up over the edge that I just created. There you go. Get down in there. You can't come out. There we go. Okay. I'm going to hook this one on with a jump ring. Let me find a smaller one. Here's one. Put this one on here. Just like, uh, where do I want to put it? Probably right about here. Okay, so I've hooked on some more. I made a few more little dangles and hooked them on, and here's what we've got for the finished product. product. And I think it's very, very pretty. Um, it would make a great keychain. You could also, like, this would be pretty to hang in your rearview mirror of your car. Um, yeah, just all kinds of stuff you could do with it. So that is my finished project for the uh, monthly challenge, awesome jewelry challenge. And I will attach or um, link in the description box below all of the other ladies that are doing this with us. And you can check out their YouTube channels. There's like 
six or seven, I think, of us now. <laughs> I can't remember to be sure. But, um, yeah, check them out as well. They uh, make some beautiful, beautiful pieces. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And um, a lot of these products are for sale on my website. Um, I've got bicones. I've got these lobster claws, just stuff like that. So if you're interested, you can check that out. Um, and my tools that I use, I have a blog, and I will link that as well in the description box below. If you want to check out my blog, it has links to all of the tools that I use um, on Amazon. That's where I got them. I do get a small commission if you use my link to buy it, but it doesn't cost you any more to purchase it than it would if you just went on there and searched it anyway, and it just helps my channel. So if you guys are interested in that, um, the links will be down below, and you guys have a great rest of the day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!